Welcome back to Country Conversations. My name is Joey, and as always, I'm joined by... Hey man, it's Chris here. What's going on tonight, Joey? Not much, man. We've got a super special guest that we're stoked to have on tonight, guys. We've got uh, Caleb Lee Hutchinson with us tonight. How you doing, Caleb? Man, I'm doing good. Honored to be on the on the show. Man, we're honored to have you. Definitely appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat with us tonight. How, how are things going in Nashville? Man, things are good. I'm actually... Uh outside of a east nashville social gathering right now that my girlfriend is partaking in uh so you guys gave me a really good excuse to not have to mingle with strangers <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man anything to help out brother yeah i appreciate it man yeah man so what it, what are things like in town now that we're kind of rounding third on this whole pandemic thing man i feel like i had uh i had one of the like weirdest intro to nashville experiences because i moved to this town when i was 19 so i had like a couple years of getting to see it but like not get to do anything or go anywhere and uh you know i turned 21 in march of 2020 and uh so i kind of kind of didn't get to like really explore um but man like you know i'm far from like a uh nashville expert but it seems seems to be back in full swing um as far as i can tell nice that's cool man where'd you move from where were you before nashville oh man i moved literally from my parents house in alice georgia i've lived in one house my whole life and uh yeah i came out here with my buddy garrett who's from louisiana and uh have since moved on from him as roommate but we'll love him forever that's awesome. So, man, if you don't mind, we'll just kind of dig into how you got into music, what got you started, and kind of, you know, where you started to where you are now. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I grew up surrounded by all kinds of music, and it's pretty much the only thing I've ever liked or been drawn to. Um, I know my dad probably wanted to be an athlete, but I um, did very well. So uh, that didn't really pan out. And I'm also big, but uncoordinated. Um, <laughs> so man, like I, I just started out. Like I've always wanted, always wanted to be a musician. Like it's always what I wanted to do. Um, I started and, and started playing guitar when I was probably 12 years old. And pretty much immediately said like, you know, my dad, this is what I want to do. And he's like, all right, if you're going to do it, then do it. And, from that age on, I was in where I could, bars, restaurants, uh, anything. That's awesome, man. Definitely sounds like you got started into it at a young age, for sure. Uh, who were some of your musical influences growing up, and what are you listening to now? Man, as far as country goes, I got, I got raised on like a lot of 70s country. Um, I mean... Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, George Jones, uh, just to name a few. I mean, those were in constant, uh, you know, circulation at my house, but also like my dad had a lot of really cool music that he was into. And like my great uncle and great aunt, um, I was like, as a young kid, I was a huge John Prine fan and, um, you know, was in like Towns Van Zandt, lots of cool, cool music. And honestly, uh, as far as country goes, it's, it's the bulk of what I listen to now. Of course, I got turned on to all the like, alt country type stuff i'm a huge sturgill simpson fan and tyler childers and all that good stuff but um man, i just listen to anything that's good you know I, I listen to all kinds of genres and um i try not to have any restrictions of what i listen to that's the best way to be yeah, yeah absolutely man. which part of georgia and were there some i mean georgia is kind of a hotbed for like you said alt country and and country and just music in general um any of the any of the big acts that that people know kind of from around where you came from yeah i guess the closest one would be um uh travis tritt uh is, grew up not too far from where i'm from and lives pretty close by actually um he's probably the closest like, dallas is west of atlanta uh sort of towards alabama and i'm on like the most western point so um that's probably it travis travis tritt's the the mega star from that area i think have you got to catch the show of travis's man i haven't yet i'd love to he's he's a i mean he's incredible oh for sure man we we caught one last year and it was awesome and you'll have to definitely get get the one as soon as you can i'm sure you're pretty busy with your own gigs though That's right. <laughs> yeah man try to be i try to be 
So for most of our listeners that know who you are and your fans that are going to be listening to this episode, it's no surprise that you are on a super popular TV show. Everybody should know that that's a fan or follower of you. I did yeah. want to, I didn't want to harp on it too much, but I did just kind of want to ask you just about your experiences about being on Idol. And I know when you were younger, you were on The Voice as well. So could you mm-hmm. tell us just about the experiences you had during those times? Yeah. So I did The Voice uh, audition when I was 15 years old. Um and like I said, I started young and I knew it's what I wanted to do. So I was like, hey, let's, let's, uh, you know, while I'm young and cute and this is impressive, let's see if I can capitalize <laughs> on it. Uh, so I did the voice, um, that, you know, that went how it went, uh, went back to school and everything like high school or whatever. And then I don't happen literally because I was graduating high school and had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And I, you know, there wasn't like a crazy musical community where I was and I just had no clue what I was doing. And I think my dad's the one who read about, you know, Idol coming back, um, their first season back on ABC and just said, well, hell, why not? Like they're coming to Atlanta for like the open call. Let's just go. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, so I'd like, I, I drove out to, uh, Atlanta and waited in line for bulk of the day and, sweat my little took us off um but hey it worked out and i mean i I really have no complaints i don't i know people got like harsh stories about those types of shows but um you know the people there really do care and they you know i I think it's kind of apparent by how many stars they've produced and Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it was a great experience dude I, i graduated high school and pretty much immediately did it so looking back on it, it just kind of feels like a summer camp or something, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, and I got a lot of, I got a lot of cool experiences out of it and certainly got to, um, learn a lot about my life and the world and the music industry. But, um, yeah, I mean the, the real crazy stuff has been post idol, you know, outside of the, the sweet bubble that I miss every day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, bet, bet, yeah man. I bet, I bet, man. Um, I mean, we, we love Luke, but I have to, I gotta ask, man. Like l- growing up, L- Lionel Richie was one of my family's favorites. What 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 was he like to be around? Lionel Richie is he's he's almost not human. He's like a being <laughs> that exists above us. And um, recently, I got to uh, so May second. I don't know when this will air, but uh, May second, they did they just did a twenty year anniversary um, for Idol. And they had us come out like the 20 year reunion or whatever. And so, uh, Maddie and I went and sang on it. And so I recently got to see Lionel and Lionel has this almost like Morgan Freeman, like quality when he talks, there just exudes wisdom. And he never, he never says hi, hello. Cause you know, he's Lionel Richie. He immediately starts a monologue. And so like <laughs> he walked up to me after that show was over and I didn't even get to say, Hey, and he just, it was 1973. And little Michael Jackson couldn't reach the cookie jar. Like he just starts <laughs> going into, you know, like Man, Stevie Wonder. What a, Stevie Wonder yeah. could see. He played chess all the time. So it's, a, <laughs> it's a lie. Uh, he he didn't say that, of course. Um, but you know, he's just and he's just like a wizard, man. He's just like he's Dumbledore or something. It's like, like crazy. I just how and he's also with love and respect to all the judges. He's 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 my favorite. Lionel is the yeah. coolest, and he's the only one who follows me on Instagram. Um, and any any time <laughs> when I was on that show, you know, the main thing that mattered to me was Lionel's reaction because he's a freaking legend. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. There's we don't have many of them left, so that's that's amazing to get to spend time with. No, him. he and I can truly say everything I've ever seen, even from the beginning. I remember. Uh, the first like Hollywood week thing when there's, you know, 300 of us or whatever. Um, it was, it was before any of us had started like cutting down. And one of the first things was like lines of 10. And I remember like, I think they had like a pee break. So I'm waiting in a line of 10 (laughs) to go out on stage to sing my first song. And he, he goes by us and you know, they're they're like, Lionel, don't look at him. Don't talk to him. Cause you know, they want that for the camera and everything. Mm -hmm. And as he's walking back, he goes, hold on a minute. And he turns to us and goes, are you kids nervous? And we're like, yes, Mr. Ritchie. And he's like, <laughs> the year was 1976. <laughs> you know? The Commodores were, you know. And he just, 
And it it doesn't even you don't even fully understand what he meant, but you're just like, man, I feel better. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> what a weight lifted off my shoulder. That's so cool, man. That is so cool. Yeah. A lot of riches and stuff. Let's jump into your music, especially this this recent EP that just came out last year, uh, Slot Machine Syndrome. I have to tell you, man, I don't say this very often with new stuff that we listen to. I was blown away by this. <laughs> I was, I'm not just saying that because you, cause, cause you're on the show. I, I mean, I was. there's three or f probably three of these tracks that are going to probably be stuff that I go back to forever. Just kind of jump in and just tell us, you know, about the project, you know, how you made it and just what it means to you. Well, first and foremost, that, that means the world sincerely. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate hearing that. Um, yeah, this project, uh, as far as everything I've done so far, it's meant the most to me. Uh, it's what I've had the most like control and say over. Um, essentially, when I first moved to Nashville, uh, they just I asked my manager like, "What what should I do?" And he's like, "Write songs." So I spent like my first year just writing songs mostly by myself, and uh, I got the opportunity. Eventually, I said, "Hey, I want to write with some people." Uh, I, I'm tired of being by myself. It gets lonely. And they said, well, uh, who would, who's like your dream people to write with? And uh, on the top of that list was Brent Cobb, a uh, fellow Georgian, but has made brilliant records and continues to. He's the freaking man. And so I threw him out there. I was like, you can't get this guy, but man, it would be cool if I could write with Brent Cobb. And like the next week, they were like, hey, you're going to write with Brent next Tuesday. And so we got together and we spent probably two hours uh, just talking about music and talking about country. And um, I just saw right away, like we were kind of cut from the same cloth, especially musically. And um, we wrote that day, the, the title track slot machine syndrome, um, which was one that I kind of had on my mind and it started writing. Um, but Brent came in and just put, you know, kind of brought these Brent Cobb isms. And as a result, like it's, probably my favorite song I've ever done uh, and it's also you know about a lot of stuff that's really personal to me. for the rest of the songs you know I got um I Must Be Right is a song I wrote with Mr. Trey Hensley who's like my favorite flat picking guitar player in the history of the world I got to rap on him um just like I got to write songs with a lot of cool people uh there's like a night that I wrote by myself um so, yeah, I appreciate you saying that, man. I really, I really love all the songs on that EP, and I think it was definitely a step in the right direction in terms of the artist I want to be. That's fantastic. My favorite, probably off the project that I really liked anyway, was uh, "Who I Am." I think it's got a super unique sound, just production wise, yeah. and it, it's just perfect with your vocal, man. And mm -hmm. Um, it's it to me, it's kind of stood out as like a statement song of you just kind of wanting to do your own thing and kind of just you being you and that's all you care about. Is that kind of what the message you were going for? Or tell us a little bit about what the inspiration behind that track was. Yeah. You know, I think my, uh, that song from a writing perspective, um, came from, uh, listening to old Hank Jr. Records. Um, and there was a song, what am I thinking of? Uh, living proof. I remember listening to that and just thinking like, this dude, it's literally like he wrote down, like it's his diary. Like he's just talking about how he feels in his life and he's putting it to music. And I just thought like, man, I just, there's something about that like vulnerability really resonates with me. And I think like it's kind of the coolest thing about country music at its best is just like relaying that vulnerability. And it's kind of like through that realizing we're all connected to get real hippy dippy with it. Yeah. Um, so that was that was my motivation. Like I just at that time I was feeling pressures and a lot of um, you know just a lot of not knowing where I was and where I should be going and what I should be doing. And I had a lot of different people in my ear telling me, yeah, just the the song was more or less just kind of a letter to myself, just to kind of uh, put my put myself in in place and where I was in life and. Yeah, I mean, that, that super personal song, just literally to me, and I just thought, I'm not going to let other people try to define me, I'll just do it myself, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. I mean, 
like I said, I, I like all of them, but I I gotta say that probably the one that I'm gonna go back to the most is the last track on the EP. What you got? It's got a kind of a '70s groove to it. It's kind of got a, I mean, it's kind of got a Stapleton, Tyler, Childers, kind of all mixed all together. It's got a bunch of bunch of different stuff mixed in there. I, I'm really digging that one. Well, thank you, man. I uh, I love that song, and uh, I wrote that with Kevin Mack and Bay Simpson. Um, those two guys are super dope songwriters. Yeah, that was that was. I give a lot of credit to Brent on that one because I brought it to him. And as far as the like chord progression goes, it's fairly modern country. Like that song is like a lot of songs that that progression. And he's like, well, let's. And I thought when I showed it to him, I thought, hey, this might be like a little too modern esque for Brent Cobb to enjoy. He goes, no, man, I love that song. Let's take it and try to record it as if George Jones is recording it. Like, let's take a modern kind of feeling and record it like the traditional real way. Um, and as a result, I think it's super unique. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you're pretty young in the grand scheme of things, Caleb, and, but your your voice is so mature and just your mindset and your, you know, your determination is that of a seasoned vet, so to speak. I mean, even at, you're what, 22, 23 now? 23, yeah. 23. Sure. And I mean, at 23 years old, you've got to do quite a bit of cool stuff, such as work alongside with Lionel Richie, Luke Bryan, Katy Perry, play at the Grand Ole Opry. What have been some of your most memorable experiences so far in your career? Man, sometimes it's all a blur. I think uh, the Opry stands out to me. I I think a lot of people don't realize how big of a deal it is to stand in that circle. Um, And I, I think, like, for me, truly the the best part is whenever I get to do a show and see people enjoy it and sing along, that means more seeing a group of five people know the words to my song and be happy to be there and see me and connect with music and the way that I connect with other people's music means more to me than any award or title ever could. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's what I do it for. Absolutely. I know you put out a cover of a Post Malone song, Better Now, back in like 2019, I want to say. Yeah. So, I know, and as you mentioned earlier, you, you have a broad array of what you listen to, but if you could pick a dream collaboration to do a song with, who would it be? Outside of country or also country? Just who, off the top of your head, if you could pick one person, anybody, any genre. If you want to give two answers, you can. If you want to go country for one and overall genres you can definitely give us two <laughs> damn all right if i'm going country i'm gonna have to say sturgill simpson i uh he to me he's he's the greatest of all time probably and i, I think he's just a, a level of genius that i i can only dream of comprehending mm-hmm. um I really, no, I, I can, this could turn into a Sturgill Simpson fan club podcast real quick. I love him so much. Um, awesome, he's man. the goat. I think yeah. outside of, it'd be cool to, it'd be cool to do something with Posty. I know he's dipped his toes in some country. Yeah. I've seen him uh, playing with Billy Strings recently. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say if I'm going to go like rap pop, Posty, uh, otherwise I would love to do a uh, song with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Man, that'd be wicked. <laughs> yeah, <we'd> be. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Wild. For sure, man. So what's on the horizon for you next, man? I know the EP came out kind of toward the end of last year. Do you have uh, anything else in the works musically as far as putting out new music? Or are you going to be hitting the road hard this summer? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of both of those things. We got uh, new songs that have been recorded. Um, I've kind of I've gotten to everything that I've been working on in the past couple months I've had full control and I've been collaborating with like basically my best friends in town. Um, as far as what comes of that, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if we're going to turn that into a full record yet or if we're going to drop some singles, but I'm definitely going to put out music this year. I have so much stinking music. Um, it just costs money to do things. Which yeah. Is the, <laughs> the bummer. Everyone's like, why don't you just drop an album? Uh, <laughs> They ain't free nor cheap. Um, right. But we're working working on getting that done. Uh, as far as touring, we're going to be all over the place. We're playing a lot of cool country festivals this summer, um, and a lot of just like little clubs and dive bars. And um, man, I mean, 
playing music's my favorite thing to do. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning. So I try to do it as much as I possibly can. For sure, man. Yeah, if you're in, we're actually, I don't know if we told you, man, we're in the Midwest area. I'm, I'm actually over in Ohio, so if you ever get okay. anywhere near this way, man, I'd love to come out and check out a show, but. For sure. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll Absolutely. Stay tuned and follow your socials and website and all that good stuff. Yeah, please, man. That would, that would be fantastic. I love Ohio. I've been quite a few times, so I'm sure we'll be back up there soon. Also okay. worth noting, this is, uh, not to not to make you boys hate me, but I am launching my very own podcast soon. Nice man. There we go. Good. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's, Tell it's, us I'm about trying... it. All right. So I appreciate it. Appreciate you asking about it. It's called the Green Couch Podcast because uh, I had a green couch <laughs> and I was like, "What do I call it?" So it's it's going to be the Green Couch Podcast. Uh, we're aiming to drop our first episode on May third. Basically, I've been wanting to do a podcast for like years and was kind of weird about it, didn't want to do it, was worried Mm -hmm. about whatever. I'm just trying to do like way more stuff that I say I want to do. I'm trying to just do it, quit being a little little baby about it. (laughs) Absolutely. You just got to jump in and go, man. That's it. That's what you got to do. Good for you, man. Is there any specific topics you're going to be covering or is it just going to be thoughts on your mind or? It's going to, I think I'm going to try to make it a bit of both. Like, uh, I'm going to have guests because I have so many really cool friends, mm-hmm. um, especially in town. Um, but yeah, man, I want, I'm going to talk about all kinds of stuff. I'm sure I'll get into some deep controversy and, uh, the good, good news is I'm not at a point where it's really going to matter. You know, like I'll just disappoint like 20 people. So that'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel culture coming after you early. They don't know who I am anymore. It's all good. <laughs> it's funny. I I did have one question for you. I was looking on your um on your website. Are you doing um are you doing a date or two on the on the new uh, musical there in Nashville? May we all? I am. Yeah, I'm uh I'm going to be uh I think maybe I think it's one date, maybe it's two. Uh, I'm not good at knowing anything. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm participating <laughs> in May we all. They they hit me up and asked if I want to be a part of it and I'm like Absolutely, that's cool, man. That'll be a cool yeah. experience for sure. They're what are they having like different different artists play the same role in, in different shows? Is that is that kind of how what they're doing? Yeah the whole the whole play is built around uh, this like in character, and so a ton of people are going to be doing it um, that are way cooler than me. So when they when they asked me about it, I was like, hell yeah! How'd y'all get my number? Let's do it. <laughs> That's sweet, man. That'll be fun for sure. Yeah, people people don't realize if you want me to do anything, just ask. I don't do much, so I'm down. <laughs> I would be remiss to not ask in favor of my wife, though. How is Maddie doing? She's doing really great, man. She has a a, a new single coming out this Friday uh, called One That Got Away. It's a really great song. Her music's the bomb. She's been working in Nashville with lots of new cool people and um yeah man she's she's kicking tail that's awesome man yeah she was my wife was uh rooting for both of you guys on idol so it is uh, I, I was rooting for her so yeah it's all good here man well caleb thanks man so much for coming on chatting with us here for a bit man we definitely appreciate it yeah i appreciate it guys thanks for uh thanks for having me on love to do it again in the future yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Absolutely, before, man. Before we let you go, man, why don't you tell our listeners who may not be familiar with your music or whatnot where they can find you on social media and where they can listen to your music? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Caleb Lee Hutchinson, and you can find me on all socials at Caleb Lee Music, uh, CalebLeeHutchinson.com for tickets uh, to all my upcoming shows, merchandise, all that good stuff. Um, I'm a Pisces. Uh, I grew up Southern Baptist. And I want you to like my music. So, Slot Machine Syndrome, go get it now and prepare for the grand takeover. That's, That's right. right man. Y'all go check you, that out. Yeah. If you listen to it, you're going to love it. Available on all streaming platforms, but go buy it on iTunes. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Caleb. Thanks so much, man. We truly appreciate it. We'll definitely catch up with you here in the future, man. And we're going we're gonna to stay on top of what you're doing this year. And I uh, definitely wish you the best, man. And we know the, the sky's the limit for you. Uh, Thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all having me on and asking such great questions and hope to do it again soon. 
Absolutely, man. And hey, oh, before we go, you all stay tuned for the Green Couch podcast coming out early May <laughs> by That's right. Caleb Lee Hutchinson. But uh, guys, thanks for tuning into this episode. We appreciate your support as always. And until next time, keep it country and take care of each other.